from poultry farming to starting a successful YouTube channel and now into poultry breeding. We are visiting Mr. Daniel Masaba, the name behind Farm Up. Finally, we are here at Dr. Daniel Masava's farm after a four hour drive. Come, let's learn together how he does it. Yes, Daniel. Yes, Jaffet. Thank you so much for allowing us to come visit your farm. You're very welcome. And Kumbi Telimba is pleased <laughs> to be here. Yeah, sure. I'm very glad to have you to my farm up farm here in Bali. I'm Dr. Daniel Masaba, a medical officer who left the medical profession and decided to pursue farming as a full-time job for me. So I met an expert at greenhouse farming. And after the conversation we had had, he advised me to do poultry farming. So I, I decided to learn a bit more about poultry farming and I actually found out that it might actually work for me. I talked to my dad and he let me use a small section of his farm uh, to start up a poultry house. I'm called Munyaro Robert. I'm the father of Dr. Daniel Masaba. He came to me and said, I want to be such a small project at home. I said, what is it? I said, poultry. He said, poultry. So it's fine, there's land here. May 2019, I, I started off that farm with just 800 birds on my dad's land. And after the first project, when I noticed it was very profitable and I could actually make it big, I decided to pursue it with all my heart. For me, I was very blessed that my dad was very supportive. Yeah? He was very supportive and not predatory yeah? on, on, on what was happening around. Very helpful, of course I support him. He has a vehicle, so if he needs fuel to go and do this, I'll give him the fuel. I don't want him to feel like he's using his own resources to help me. Then from the word go, he knew what he wanted in life. And so when he decided to pursue something, I've always not had doubt in him. When doctor is not there, I supervise, but I know where my limits are. So I cannot come here and begin picking anything. If there's anything I want from Dan, I'll go to Dan. I said, had an issue, can you help me with it? As a family, or if I've worked, I say, ah, I should have been doing this. You guys, this time you have to pay me. <laughs> Currently, I'm a farmer and I'm greatly known for poultry farming all around the country. I've been to a lot of places, helped loads of people start poultry farms. I personally have started quite a number of farms. Uh, this is just one of my farms. I started with a smaller farm somewhere. When I started my farm, maize was at 1,300 shillings. That was more than twice what I had planned for. I was working as a doctor. I was earning about 3 million shillings in terms of my salary. But it was costing me about at some point about four five million to feed the birds. It cost me about 33 million from, the, from, from building the chicken house to the point when the chickens started to lay. It was too much for me. But well, um, it taught me a lot of lessons. It was a lot of money. I could certainly have done it cheaper because the chicken house I built was first of all extravagant. It wasn't like this. You know, it had bricks at the bottom. That wasn't really necessary. Something like this is very useful. Chickens don't need luxury. Number two, the quality of the feed. I learned the hard way that quality of feed is important. With my very first flock, I, I bought some feeds. I was buying things like soya, and they really hit me because I was buying them from the wrong places. They were preparing them the wrong way. I was buying maize brand that, that has overstayed and it's old, and it became a problem for me on the farm. So that affected the production of the birds. Between six weeks and the point of laying, there's a lot of work that goes in because during this point, the reproductive system is developing. Now, a lot of people won't pay attention to that. And when the chickens start laying, they don't lay good eggs. 
and then you're all oh, they lay very few eggs you're like then you start trying to make changes at the end now people usually imagine that looking after chickens properly is very hard no it's not hard you just have to follow a few particular principles it becomes really easy so there are particular things you need to make sure you do so that you raise the birds well and they are what we call target weights you can't tell how good a chicken is doing from from how it looks unless you know its weight you can't know you understand eh? so you need to make sure that you're on target weight if you're behind the target weight you need to make sure you change particular things increase the amount of feed you're giving them or maybe the feed you're giving them don't have the right constituents things like that those are the things you pay a lot of attention to so this is the inside of our chicken house and as you can see our water system is automated so this is our drinker system for water so the water is supplied through the pipes as you can see and then it will come down to this drinker system so that simply means as you can see on the inside here we have water the last thing you want to happen inside your chicken house is that there is no water that's the worst thing that can happen to you so these are automatic feeders so what that means is that we just put the food inside the feeders once or twice a day for our purposes we do twice a day because at a particular point we want the feeders to be empty the chickens will come feed on the food and then they will empty the feeders they are very good because they don't spill food and that's one of the biggest problems because in a lot of farms um, food will be spilled and you want to be losing a lot of feed in terms of the food pouring on the outside of the farm also the litter inside the chicken house is very very important and that's why it's called a deep litter system because it needs to have deep litter now our litter over here is made from wood shavings but some people can use coffee husks and other things and uh, you need to put a thick and good enough layer inside the chicken house you know you'll be inside here and it doesn't smell like a bad place why because of the litter so when the chickens drop their droppings on the inside of this house the droppings will get mixed with this litter and if i try to scratch you'll notice that it's actually a very thick layer you know i'm still scratching and i still haven't bought found the bottom of this of this place so i've finally gotten to the bottom you know so it's quite some distance and as the chickens start scratching they mix the litter together with their droppings and that's very advantageous because it ensures that it dilutes the droppings of the chickens so the chicken house will not be smelly number one it will have proper nice aeration number two and you won't have diseases because the chickens will not be interacting with their droppings now with this kind of setting as the litter gets mixed with the droppings it actually just becomes very good manure actually if you if you take a very nice look around my farm in addition to the chicken house you see over here I have a lot of crops that I'm growing yeah and the reason these crops look nice is because of the of the manure that I get from the chicken houses so growing food around actually makes it really cheap for me because it means that the self can the farm can be as self-sustaining as possible without me needing to touch my pocket when I started um, this on, on my dad's land with a smaller farm I had a problem and I had a lot of visitors coming in to come and buy buy eggs buy what I got full typhoid I got a disease it struck me my chickens died properly being a scientist i understand that a lot of these things have reason behind them there's something that causes it if i can stop it then it won't happen again if my birds got sick because of fall typhoid it's because there was a particular biosecurity measure that i didn't implement and i know it i identified it two things usually that lead to diseases of the farm number one poor vaccination programs or not vaccinating the birds a lot of farmers don't vaccinate their birds or they vaccinate them wrongly they give them the wrong vaccines or they give them vaccines themselves wrongly or they handle the vaccines wrongly if you do any of those three things your vaccination won't work but number two and more importantly biosecurity with biosecurity it's things that you do every day on the farm and it's very easy to abandon them and not to take care of them you understand so when you come in the farm You've, you've, you've changed your clothing, you've washed your, 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 your hands, you've put on gumboots. Before you enter the chicken house, you've disinfected those gumboots because there's a foot deep at the entrance of each house. Those things are what are going to make sure that diseases are kept on the outside. They don't come on the inside. You need to make sure that your gumboots are, you know, placed on the inside. And uh, inside here, the reason is because we have a disinfectant. It's a chemical, yeah? There is a chemical on the inside 
that kills microorganisms on your gumboats. So we've been walking outside here, there could be microorganisms. After you're going to walk inside, you're going to step inside the litter. You don't want the chickens to get into contact with disease. So that's the purpose of, the, of this. And if you just take a small look outside here, you can see that we have some eggs. These are eggs that have been collected from the chicken house. They have been put in baskets. We're going to put them onto trays after here. So all these have just been collected this morning. This colleague of mine over here is collecting eggs from the chicken house. Someone just moves on the inside here and they will pick eggs. As you see him picking the eggs, he will put them onto the trays and then we shall take the eggs on the outside. The birds, when they want to lay eggs, they'll just enter inside there. They will lay their eggs and then they will come outside. As you can see, our birds over here, they have been debicked. If you look at the mouth of the bird, it has been debicked. And the purpose of that debicking is to make sure that the birds don't peck the eggs. Because what usually happens is that if the birds are not debicked, they will peck on the eggs and they will break the eggs. Currently, I produce over 120 trays of eggs every day. Yeah, on, on, on just this farm. Yeah. Now, if we put in, into perspective for the bigger farm, I, I once had 20,000 layers there and I was producing over 400 trays, actually over 500 trays of eggs every day. If, if you've lived outside the main cities in, in Uganda, you will know that up country people prefer to eat local chicken. Yeah, so it's going to be very difficult for you to sell 300 broilers. Over here people will grow, if you look around you're just seeing gardens, you know, we've just harvested beans, that's what people are going to eat. We're going to eat vegetables, meat and meat products are a luxury. Eggs on the other side are eaten everywhere, even in the villages, the smallest towns, you'll find people eating Rolex, you know, which, which, which has eggs. In the smallest towns, you're going to, you, in the smallest areas, you're going to find bakeries, people are making bread, they're making cakes, they're still going to need eggs. Uh, eggs are eaten in schools, so they are more widely consumed compared to, compared to meat. So for me, it was a no-brainer, number one, that I would start off with chickens that lay eggs. Uh, but number two, it's more profitable, yeah? And remember, for me, the goal was to make money. The place that I'm in, Mbale, is one of the most highly densely populated areas in, in Uganda. And Uganda has a lot of people. These people eat food every day. 120 trays is actually nothing. So in just the local area around, I don't need to take any eggs outside Mbale district. All the eggs that I produce are consumed around here. So the eggs will be taken up by people who buy in wholesale, you know, for their shops. Um, people who buy Rolex chapati sellers, you understand? A few people who take for schools once in a while. I had to make sure that I get an outlet, a shop somewhere where I, I do put and sell my eggs. And from there, the eggs are dispersed. So the eggs are consumed very, very easily and quickly by people. So after I started my farm and um, I had acquired this land over here and I had started this farm over here, I had of course accumulated some money. Then I decided to come together with a friend of mine, a colleague who we partnered with to start the breeder farm. So we started the breeder farm. It's a very big farm. It's on about 400 acres of land in Nakaseke and it, it has the capacity for about 60,000 breeder chickens. A day old chick for a breeder farm costs about six, seven euros. We produce over 100,000 day old chicks every week from the breeder farm. After I depleted my first flock, I wanted to put the second flock. I ordered birds from a particular company and it took me six months to receive the birds. So I told myself that one day I'm going to make sure that I start a breeder farm and close this gap. Not only for myself, but for a lot of farmers outside there in the poultry business. So for the breeder farm, I have a lot of outlets around the country. I have outlets, uh, you know, in Kampala, Mukono, Jinja, Mbale, as far as Gulu, as far as Mbarara. So I have outlets all around the country. For someone who is starting, they are very lucky because I have a YouTube channel where I put almost all the information. Now, when I was starting, I didn't have that option. You understand? And um, the most interesting bit is that the information is everywhere. You see, if you just go and type in poultry guide PDF on Google, you'll be surprised how many books you're going to download. And people just don't want to read these books. This information is everywhere. So what I actually did, I didn't do anything complicated. I just went to Google, put in poultry. If, if for example, I get a problem with a disease on my farm, let's say fall typhoid. I just put in how to manage fall typhoid. In Google, it will bring about 50 articles. I only need to read 20 of them to become an expert in one day. 
in managing fall typhoid and how to prevent it. You understand? And from that day going forward, I'm an expert at managing poultry, sorry, fall typhoid. So for me, I believe the reason I've become quite good at what I'm doing is simply looking out for information, seeking out the information. The information is available, but seeking it out. You must have, have passion for what you are going to do. Don't see someone doing something because it's successful, you, you also enter. Because farming, either growing crops or you're rearing animals, you must have passion. Like any other business, you must be there. You must have trusted people to deal with because you can't run a business alone. There's a balance between starting as soon as possible and making sure you're ready before you start. Now, there's a lot of people will start without being ready. They have no knowledge, they have nothing, they have some money, they start. It's a mistake. A lot of people will look for knowledge for so long and never start. You understand? It? You need to start. And if you don't have money to start, get a job. Start with as little as you can. That's the most important thing. Start. When you start, it becomes very easy to build on. And once you've started, a lot of people start trusting you. When they start seeing some form of success, it becomes easy. And even for you yourself, you see, it's very easy to build on small successes. Yeah? If you have an achievement, it's easy for you to get motivated to do something else. Farming has done a lot for me. A lot. A lot. I, I, I believe I wouldn't be this far. Actually, if you compare me to my peers who are, who are still practicing medicine, I would say I'm ahead of most of them. I've been able to purchase a lot of land, for example. Uh, I've been able to build myself a house. I've been able to, to you know, to, to, to buy cars. You understand? I, I can travel and go where I want, when I want. I don't have to set an alarm in the morning. You understand? A lot of, I, 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 a lot of times I talk to people and they're like, man, today I have to beat, I have to beat jam. You understand? I don't, I don't have to beat jam at any time because I don't need to go to, to be in the city center by 8 a.m. or by 9 a.m. You understand? So I have a lot of time to myself. I can travel and, you know, go to, if, if I needed to go to the U.S., I would go to the U.S. tomorrow. You understand? it? Because I, I have the freedom and I believe that's the most, the, the best thing about business in general. You understand? It? To, be, to have the freedom to do what you want, when you want. From the farm and now to the outlet, we are right here in Bale Town at the Farm Up Shop, where you get to find all their eggs, where you get all the chicks. And if we've learned anything from today's episode, it's never only about knowledge, but taking action from everything that Dr. Daniel Masaba has shared with us. So, if you have that project, if you have that farm that you've been thinking about, we hope that you found the inspiration to start or to see it grow to something bigger. Thank you for watching Nkumbi Telimba.